Today I'm going to read The Queen's Bathing Machine and it's a story that's set back in history in Victorian times. Now in Victorian times they used to wear these mop caps and you might see somebody in the story that is wearing one of these mop caps. So have a look out for her. I hope you enjoyed the story and see you soon. This is a young Queen Victoria with her husband, Prince Albert. This is Queen Victoria with her crown on, much older. This is the story of Queen Victoria's bathing machine. Words by Gloria Whelan, pictures by Nancy Carpenter. Now look, this is Queen Victoria and a bathing machine. I wonder what that is. She looks like she might be swimming there. And look, this is her crown. Look at the illustrations and all the drawings. Somebody were doing a headstand with their feet out of the water. And there too, look. Can't see any heads, but there are arms and legs. Good drawings, aren't they? Queen Victoria's bathing machine. Have a look what's in these pictures. What can you spot there? This story is set in Victorian times. Victoria, because she was queen, they called it Victorian times. And this is Queen Victoria. And this is her maid in an old fashioned mop cap a black uniform and an apron, or a pinny, they used to be called. So it says, Queen Victoria looked out at the sea. It was blue, it was cool, it was nice as could be. The day was so hot, the sun was so bright. Her petticoats itched and her corset was tight, and her corset is this here that they're pulling in to make them look a lot slimmer. She whispered a wish, it was only a whim, how grand it would be to go for a swim. And this book, as you can see already, is a rhyming book. So she's looking out to see there. There's, I think possibly one of her daughters, she had a lot of children. another picture. This looks like Queen Victoria here. Her maid looks a little bit tired, doesn't she? And this is her husband, Prince Albert. And these must be all their children and their dog. Okay. Her lady-in-waiting. Now, a lady-in-waiting is her servant, her maid, and here she is. It's a tired lady there. Her lady-in-waiting collapsed on the floor. I've never heard such nonsense before. Impossible, she cried. It would be a disgrace to see more of the Queen than her hands and her face. How would she get from the beach to the water without showing more of herself than she ought to? Now, in those days, they didn't really have swimming costumes and they didn't show much of their skin. They had long dresses long sleeves and high necks. The Queen sighed a sigh. I'll give up the notion. I'll never be allowed to enter the ocean. For how can I swim if I wear all my clothes, my petticoats and dresses, my shoes and my hose? They'd get drippy and slushy and soggy and sodden and down I would sink right to the bottom. And this is her dress and her petticoats and her hose. There's another word for tights and her little legs dangling at the bottom of the sea, bottom of the ocean. So this word here that, sa that says ocean is here. And that's another word for sea. And hose, another word for tights. 
lots and lots of adjectives, drippy and slushy and soggy and sodden means really wet. On the next page. And this is Queen Victoria in the bathtub. There we are with her knees up and all of her clothes above her with her maid It's an old-fashioned bathtub that they used to put by the fire to keep them warm. My dear, said Prince Albert, if it is your wish to dabble and splatter and swim like a fish, there must be a way to transport you with ease while keeping the populace from glimpsing your knees. I'll give all my genius and all my attention to devise a device to invent an invention. What do you think that means? Pause and have a think. Now, Prince Albert here. Men and ladies weren't allowed to see each other. Partly dressed. So he's going to try and invent something so that when she goes to the beach, she will be screened or she won't have anybody watching her because it's not the right thing to do in Victorian times. It's not like us wearing our swimsuits now on the beach or in the swimming pool. So here he is, he's researching. He looks very smart, doesn't he? He's a prince, he's in his princely costume, his military costume. Very smart. The children, how do you think they're behaving? Have a look. They seem to be not behaving very well, do they? Let's have a look. These ones are playing a game of chess. Here's Queen Victoria with her fan. And here's someone with a slingshot, which is a little catapult, look, and they're firing things. Pieces of paper, I shouldn't wonder, at their brothers or sisters. Okay, so what does this say? Albert was learned. Albert was bright. Albert was nearly always right. He'd been everywhere from Denmark to Munich. He studied old wars, both Spartan and Punic. His knowledge of battles no one could fault. He'd read dozens of books on the catapult. So there again, there is the catapult. And this, you take something in here and these are elastic and you ping it somebody. So that word's there, catapult. Albert was very intelligent. He was nearly always right. He travelled a lot because these are places. That's why they've got uh, capital letters, Denmark and Munich. And he studied a lot. He could study all the battles and know everything about the battles. If you asked him a question, he would probably know. He'd read dozens of books. That means lots and lots of books, doesn't it? Let's see what's hiding on the next page. There's quite a lot going on in this next page. These look like drawings. That's Queen Victoria again. And there, he's obviously drawn out in his mind by his research into his books because they didn't have the internet then because it was in the olden times, so in the, back in history years ago. So Albert is obviously telling Queen Victoria about what he's researched in his books. And there she's with her fan again. And there is the drawing where he's thinking, oh, I can catapult Queen Victoria. This is an old fashioned catapult all the way look he's drawn her all the way into the sea maybe too many people might actually see her and that's not what they want is it they want less people to see her especially the public which is people like me and you because we're not around the queen now it hurled heavy rocks into the air chucking them easily from here to there victoria dear it might be romantic to be launched from your window into the Atlantic. Moving so quickly, you would never show as much as a peak of your royal toe. Now here I can spot some phonics, peak. And whenever someone's reading a book, it's really good to spot the phonics. Okay. Here we've got Atlantic and that's one of the oceans, one of the seas. It hurled, which means it threw transported heavy rocks into the air. Launched is where we launch something like a rocket and push it off into the air. Okay. But 
Talbot, the English, you know how they shoot. Partridge and pheasants, magansas and coot. Whatever is up in the air they bring down and roast it and toast it to a crispy brown. To have for their breakfast, to have with their tea, I'm sure you don't wish that to happen to me. So she's thinking she might be shot down by somebody that might shoot birds. And you can see at the end, shoot, coot, down, brown, tea and me, they're all rhyming words. What's happening here? They're in their night clothes. Look, Queen Victoria's got a mop cap on too. And Prince Albert's got a long Victorian nightwear hat on too. So they look like they're on their bed. Just about midnight Albert sprang from the bed a brilliant idea had come into his head wake up dear Victoria your worries are over you can swim all the way from Osborne to Dover and there are two places again capital letters and capital letter for the names Victoria and Albert because they're names okay look on this page this is Prince Albert and each one of these is Queen Victoria. They waltzed, they mazurked, they danced a poker or two, then collapsed on their bed with their nightcaps askew. And askew means not completely on, to one side. Here's Albert again, some children in the background. What are they doing? And over here on the other picture, we've got Queen Victoria. She's got her feet in a bowl with her maid there, look. And someone's doing something here with some sort of invention, I think. The little baby sat there. Must be one of the princes or princesses. First thing in the morning, Albert got busy. His imperial demands made everyone dizzy. I must have some wood. Quick, cut down a tree. Dig up some stones and send them to me. Get me a wheelwright, get me a mason. Victoria's splashing shan't be confined to a basin. So the basin is like a pot that she's got her feet in. That's another word for that one. Cutting down trees is a little fact here. This looks like a Christmas tree. And Prince Albert actually brought the idea of the Christmas tree from Germany all the way back to England. And that's the tradition of where and why we have a Christmas tree at Christmas time. Looks to me like Albert is sawing some wood there. He's reading his plans for the invention that he's going to make so that Queen Victoria has some privacy while she's getting changed and bathing and going into the sea for her swim. Albert sawed timber, he pounded some nails, he ordered four wheels, he laid down stone rails. He constructed a room with nary a frown, he fashioned a porch with steps to climb down. Pause the video and see what you think. He may be building. So this little boy here looks very keen to show Queen Victoria something. I think the maid might have fainted and collapsed at the sight of it. Shall we take a look at what that something might be that Prince Albert has designed? Look over here. It's like a house on wheels, isn't it? He looks very proud of himself, doesn't he? For making it right. When all was completed, it was fit for a queen. Victoria, I've made you a bathing machine. So this is now called a bathing machine. Let's go to a house. So 
in through the door. This is Prince Albert using the bathing machine, I think. Oh, and look at that stripy swimsuit or bathing suit as they used to call it. It's very long, isn't it? That's how they used to wear them in Victorian times. So let's see what it says. Let me tell you, my dear, what I propose. You enter the back door wearing all of your clothes. Off comes your dress, off comes your rings, off come all those unmentionable things. You put on your suit as quick as can be and the bathing machine will roll into the sea. So that's what the wheels are for. You can take it down to the sea. Very good idea. Once out on the porch, the curtain will hide you while your lady in waiting hovers beside you. You climb down the steps in perfect repose into the ocean right up to your nose. No one will get so much as a peep. E. Except for the creatures down in the deep. She looks quite happy with that, doesn't she? So off she goes into the bathing machine. You're a genius, dear Albert. I'm truly excited. We'll have all the workmen fetted and knighted. She entered the bathing machine by the door. Off came her corset, ten petticoats and more. And this is what she looked like behind her screen. Look at all those petticoats because the Victorian dresses were so puffy. The windows were shuttered from prying spies and her lady-in-waiting covered her eyes. Prying means they might have been looking, peeping through the window, so they covered them. Look at that brilliant picture and that's exactly what Prince Albert would have been thinking about her doing as he thought about how to invent something. Very clever. So it's wheeled across the sand just to the shoreline. Here we go. Goodbye to the land, goodbye to the turf. Victoria rode the waves and dove into the surf. And the surf are the white waves. The white waves. And here she is. These look like swimming strokes to me. That looks like a backstroke. And she's tumbling. She looks like she's having fun, doesn't she? And this is the breaststroke look. All strokes that you might have practised whilst you were swimming. Now look at her costume and her clothes. It's in black still. She'd wear quite a lot of dark colours. And also she had little shoes on while she was swimming. And the bathing suit was high on the neck, long on the legs, that covered as much skin as possible. Because that's just what it was like in olden days in history. Dog paddle, butterfly, side stroke and crawl. The buoyant Victoria attempted them all. She plunged and she pitched, she rolled and she wallowed. With water all around her, some of it swallowed. Now, butterfly is a swimming stroke and side stroke is a swimming stroke and so is cruel. Buoyant, this word here, means that she was floating. Oh, look, here are some sailors. Look how they're dressed with white bell-bottom trousers, straw hats and navy blue tops. They, they look, they're actually looking at something, aren't they, through their looking glass. What are they looking at? Let's have a see. Oh, now this house is on the Isle of Wight and it's Osborne House on the Isle of Wight and this is where this would have been perfect to use the bathing machine. And they can see Queen Victoria splashing in the ocean. How fantastic! Two sailors on a frigate were having a tiff. One said a flat boat, one said a skiff. It might be a schooner that had hoisted a sail. If it gets closer, we'll give it a hail. It's taking the shape of a soup tureen. Belay in a vast, I believe it's our queen. So after all the things they thought they'd seen, 
they then discover it was Queen Victoria, Queen. So a schooner and a frigate and a flatboat to all types of boats and ships. Oh, and look, how do you think Queen Victoria is feeling swimming in the ocean? How do you feel when you're swimming in the swimming pool or splashing in the water at the seaside? I think she's really happy here, isn't she? She does look a little bit drippy and soggy here. There's a puddle of water. Let's see what the story says. Victoria, unaware of her subject's surprise, carried on with her watery exercise. Tuna and turtles and salmon and flounder tickled her toes and swam all around her. With a splash and a skitter and a final rinse, the grateful Victoria returned to her prince. And here we've got tuna, salmon and flounder, all types of fish that tickled her toes. Some good adjectives there because actually you can imagine, can't you, that they were very tickly. At the back here there's some author's notes. If you have the book, you can read those. And look at this. This is Queen Victoria's bathing machine on the Isle of Wight in England. There it is, is the actual bathing machine. So it just steps up on wheels with a little room. So we've got changed in there. Come down. That would be wheels to the shore, as we've seen in the story, and she'd have come down the steps. How fantastic! What a great story. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's given you some ideas about the types of things they did and the types of clothing they wore in Victorian times. This is an old fashioned bathing suit, just like the one that Queen Victoria would have worn a mop cap and stockings. I hope you've enjoyed the story and your trip back into Victorian times.